Glacier National Park. It's a magnificent park and a place that everybody, we feel, should visit. As Gary says, it's majestic. <laughs> In every sense of the word. But we're going to talk about some of those things that we enjoyed, mm -hmm. maybe didn't enjoy so much, and we're bringing back a segment that we haven't really done in quite a while. And Gary's that's favorite segment. Yes, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to share everything that we liked and didn't like about Glacier. So stick around because you won't want to miss that. Let's first begin with a little background and some fun facts. Established in 1910, Glacier holds the distinction of being one of the earliest national parks and was signed into law by President William Howard Taft. Today, the park continues to attract visitors from across the globe to experience its beauty and wildlife. Covering more than 1 million acres, the park is roughly the size of Rhode Island and is one of the largest national parks in the country. Within its vast borders, visitors can explore dense forests, rugged mountains, and panoramic lakes. Fun fact, did you know that Glacier's nearly 3 million annual visitors almost triples the entire population of Montana? This remarkable statistic reinforces the park's popularity and the importance of planning in advance to fully experience its spectacular beauty. We're sure you've heard of going to the Sun Road. It's a marvel of engineering and a national historic landmark spanning an iconic 50-mile drive. Built between 1919 and 1933, using almost 500,000 pounds of explosives, the Going to the Sun Road offers unparalleled views and links to its many trailheads. And if you're looking for a hiking trail, Glacier boasts 158 trails that span nearly 750 miles of breathtaking beauty. Whether your preference is a leisurely hike or a challenge along the Continental Divide, there's a trail for everyone. Choose from stunning gems like Avalanche Lake, Two Medicine, Hidden Lake, or the Highline Trail. Okay, let's talk numbers. The park's rich ecosystem supports abundant wildlife from bears and bighorn sheep to elk and mountain goats. With 71 species of mammals and 276 bird species, Glacier is a dream destination for wildlife enthusiasts. Now back to the video. Okay, first start with the going to the Sun Road because that is the main artery in Glacier. Yeah, if you're not familiar, there is one road that goes from the east side of the park to the west and west to east, of course, and it's called going to the Sun Road. It's only open maybe late June if you're lucky. September. Yeah. yeah. Usually it's, they say, figure maybe that first week of July. There was a lot of snow this, this past season. And especially even a week before we got there, there was a foot of snow. So yeah. we were thinking there's no way that the whole road will be open. They start like in March, you know, or April, trying to get all of the snow off of the roads and we got lucky. This is our second day here. Yesterday, we just went to um, the visitor center, ask questions, find out what were the best things to do with the limited amount of time that we have in the park. So today, we had a reservation for going to the Sun Road. And guess what? Today's the first day that it's completely open. Of all days. I know. Talk about timing. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. Welcome to Glacier. Stop. <laughs> You're all set. Just take a stop and go straight. Have fun. Thank you. Thanks for having it open for us today. Oh, oh you're welcome. Just for you guys. Yeah. We are lucky. <laughs> because if you're going to use going to the Sun Road from the west side, you've got to have a pass. Yes. So you have to go online to recreation.gov to get those passes. The longest drive on going to the Sun Road is on the west side. The, the very top is Logan Pass. And from the west side of Glacier, it's about 32 miles versus about 20 some miles. <laughs> 20 some miles uh, on the east side. Yeah. This road is, is just, it is really a, an engineering marvel. 
but it, I think though it, it's a lot more technical on the west side so you really have to be careful because there's a, a number of switchbacks the road is really narrow there's yeah, no you know, shoulder yeah, anywhere none at all <laughs> it's straight down <laughs> so if you're driving <laughs> make sure you're you're paying very close attention because the scenery is going to be just amazing but you've got all this oncoming traffic and if you're driving a wide truck there's parts of that road that are, are really extremely narrow so you need to exercise a lot of caution yes and being that the driver is not going to be able to see as much take advantage of every turnout where you can pull yeah. over so that your driver can also take in the views yeah there, there are a number of turnouts and they've got those kind of sequenced with really some of the more spectacular views along the drive yeah some of our favorite places along the west side were of course Lake McDonald yeah. um, that was beautiful it's, it's a it's a pretty large lake it's it's about 10 it's miles massive. long yeah and, and you'll drive probably about five or six miles along the lake before yeah. your view gets cut off yeah. by by the tree line yeah uh, Bird Woman Falls was really oh, that's, cool. That's spectacular. Yeah. Um, Weeping Wall, the, at being there at the beginning of the season was cool because there's so much runoff from the snow at the mountaintops that all of the waterfalls and the Weeping Wall were just in full bloom. No. <laughs> full drainage. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot of water. <laughs> but you know the, our, the hike that we did. Avalanche Lake Trail. Yes, and uh, Trail of the Cedars was first. Trail of, Trail of the Cedars, and that's that's a boardwalk, and it's a mile. Mile round, yeah, it's a it's, loop. It's, it's a loop, but about midway through, it branches off to Avalanche Lake Trail, mm -hmm. and that, that's about four miles-ish, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, to Avalanche Lake. Well, and it's only 2.2 two mile, 2 .2 miles out there. Yeah, it's round, the round trip for yeah. miles, um, but the, the, the views is awesome. the views are just <laughs> so stunning. Yeah, between the lake and then all of the bluffs, the mountains, um, waterfalls. Yeah, you'll, you'll see a bunch of waterfalls up there on the the mountain ridge. Well, there, even as we walked, there were like big streams. I don't know, can you call it a stream? But the water was so powerful going through yeah, there for, and down through the rocks. About the first half mile to three quarters of a mile you'll, you'll parallel a, a, a stream yeah. and that water's running really really fast like when really it's, fast <laughs> so and then I, I think though the meeting that the the volunteer was oh, yeah. was, was really interesting because um, and we hope to do more of that as far as have have some interviews with some of the, the park officials and kind of get their take on on the park and their contribution to what they're doing. Yeah, because they're not work. rangers. They're just, yeah. they're volunteers that are out there. Yeah. So you've been out here how long? I first came to Montana in 71. And what brought you out here? I was on a road trip with a friend. And, and you didn't go home? Well, I went home, but I, I've come back. Okay. So, what's the most interesting thing about this area? Uh, well, I started off in Michigan, and the topography here is a bit different than Michigan. Okay. Yeah, it's just the mountains and the snow and the trees. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. Do you just come out like for the season? Or oh, do you live I, out here? No, I live out here. Oh, oh nice. So, What's the strangest thing that you've seen when you've been out here? Oh, I'm give me time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the strangest thing that I've seen out here is probably the way that some people act out here. A lot of people aren't used to being in the wilderness or in the woods and they don't know exactly what to do. And so I've seen some um, strange things where people approach animals. I think it's probably it. Somebody, I, I think a lot of times people when they see a bear, they just lose their mind mm -hmm. and they want to get closer and closer. And, then, and if somebody's taking a picture, well, I'm just going to stand in front of you and then I'm just going to stand in front of you and take a picture. Um, they just yeah. have no respect for wildlife. Right. right. I think I think that's that's the problem that we've seen all across the country in a lot of the parks right now is that there's not that enough respect for the wild right. animals. And in general, the wild animals are tolerant of us, but sometimes suddenly they're not. Right. Um, and there's not been too many unfortunate occurrences, but they do happen. We met him and then um, a woman on our way back.
Yeah. Um, so they're they're out there a lot. Yeah. Helpful. Answer questions. Tell so de- stories. So, yeah, definitely definitely put Avalanche Lake Trail Trail on your list for hikes, and I I would rate it for me a five out of five because it's it's not technical. Yeah. It, it it you know it is rolling. Um, but I think but it's, just it's, 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 man, it. it's very manageable. Yeah, your family can do it. Yeah, because yeah. we did see a lot of families there. So, mm-hmm. five out of five. I can take that, take that to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, something else about the west side of the park. So, those were the, really the main things that we did. You know, we took the drive, and we stopped, and we did the, um, the hike. That was the, the major thing that we did on that side. But something that I had found out about, and I'm sure a lot of you know about this, but something that we really enjoyed was we had downloaded the Guide Along app. We ended up calling the narrator Guy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so whenever we talked about him, it was always, what did Guy say? Um, but he lots of great information about the park and the history of the park and um, so that that's something that's well worth and a wasn't few that dollars. a nominal charge yeah I, I don't know ten twelve dollars and it's for the whole it's you know you can start it wherever you want it's based off satellite and so wherever you are it's going to tell you what's coming up and you know when to turn yeah and, I would say it's very well sequenced too because yeah. it, it he will tell you even before you get there, so you have time to decide if you want to make that stop or not. Right. We used it in Yellowstone, too. Yeah. It, it was awesome. It's very well there, there's a few different ones out there, but we really did enjoy the guide along. Yeah. As you go up, you know, we we went that, that first day on the west side, we went all the way up to Logan Pass. The, the snow was almost as tall as me. <laughs> yeah. That you, you could definitely tell that, that they still had a lot of snow that, that had to, had to melt. And uh, I mean, you, you reach, you know, a certain part above the, the, the line, the snow line, and it's almost like night and day. Well, I'll tell you what, they do a great job on the roads. There was no snow on there the roads at all. There wasn't. You didn't have to worry about slick spots, or black ice or anything. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, but it's definitely chillier up at Logan Pass. Yes, we brought a change of clothes and jacket and everything because, I mean, you know, if you're used to going up in the mountains, you know it's going to be a lot colder yeah. up there. Yeah. So, so about 30-some miles to get up there and... A nice visitor center. Yeah, other, except we got there after 4 o'clock, so, so they were closed. Yes. At least that first day, so... You know, make sure you, if, if you need the visitor center, you, you time it right. And <laughs> Bathrooms were open. That's the major part. That's what everybody <laughs> really needs. <Yeah. laughs> the west side versus the east side are really quite different. Oh, my gosh. Night and day. Because you've got the continental divide that splits. Right there at Logan Pass, I think, isn't it? It comes through there at Logan Pass. And you've got really two different ecosystems. So the west side is it's a lot wetter than the east side and I think the east side is windier and a little bit more drier so you've seen you know if you're on the east side there's a couple fires that they've had Mm -hmm. and uh, we kind of changed it up a little bit because on the west side we did the drive ourselves but on the east side Linda decided and this was pretty amazing but we used the red bus tour. Yeah. And it was well worth the cost. Oh my gosh, yes, it was absolutely. Amazing. These buses were built back in 1938. They're in fantastic condition. Back in, was it the 90s? They had um, the buses one by one went to Ford and Ford rebuilt did some, them. Rebuilt them. Ford offers to rehab renovate, you know, refurbish the buses, and they're willing to do it for free, under the condition that the buses are donated to the National Park Service. So folks, in 1999, the first bus is driven from Glacier National Park to Dearborn, Michigan. Does anybody want to guess which bus that was? 98. Damn right it was. (laughs) Folks, bus 98 was the first bus that Ford rehabbed. They spent a year and they spent $1.1 million rehabbing this bus. Every other bus after that cost them around about $250,000. But the end result was that in uh, 2002, 33 of the original 35 buses back on the road here in Glacier 
ready to run the road for another 60 years. Uh, and so then only the third break in service that we've ever had was actually uh, just a couple years ago during COVID-19. I would have to say what, one of the best parts of this was you're, you're leaving the driving to somebody else and you've got this driver that has this extensive knowledge about the park. And mm -hmm. through and the stories, entire, yeah, through great the, stories. Through the entire trip, yeah, you're hearing all these statistics about the park and the stories and you know, I, it's it's very well timed out to where, you know, he makes the strategic stops. So we started at um, St. Mary Lake was our first stop and Wild Goose Island is out in the middle of it. Oh, that, that was so, cool. and he had a great folklore story about the island. So that was great. Um, we saw J Jackson Glacier and uh, many glacier, two medicine. Would you drive up to Logan Pass? This is our second trip up to Logan Pass. This morning we booked a red bus tour. So this tour, it was the Eastern Alpine tour. When we came up on our own in our truck, we started at the west side of the park and came up to Logan Pass. This time we started on the east side. And we have a great driver, he tells Really, he's a super storyteller, for sure. Um, about 17 people can be on the bus, other than the driver. So, kind of a nice, intimate group. Yeah, and, and the neat thing, too, is the top is open. So Yeah, so when, you can stand up. The tours, I think, are, are very well done, and, and we're, we're enjoying it. Yeah, it's a fun morning. Spend a little time there, and then you come back down. And this tour is available on the west side as well. Yes, so, and it's a few different places that they go. It's not just going to the Sun Road. We opted to take one that was just on the east side, but we had a great guide. We did. So kudos to Jammer, Jammer Jim. Jim. He was awesome. Okay, Gary, it's, it's time for it's your favorite time. Part. So why don't you why don't you go ahead and start us off, Linda? With the good. Why don't you start off with the good? Okay, for me, um, my favorite part of the park were the waterfalls. I mean, they, some of them were just huge. <laughs> they were so big. So it was just one after another, and then the weeping wall. That those were my favorite. The weeping parts. wall was was spectacular. Yeah, but then I have a B. I have an A and a B. So that was A. B <laughs> was the red bus tour. I guess you can have a debate about the east versus the west and while I really loved the west there was a factor that I really enjoyed about the east gee Gary what was that <laughs> hmm. hmm well I was wondering if you were gonna get to this part <laughs> yeah heck yeah so we talked about the roads being a lot less steep steep uh, not as narrow and, and maybe a little bit less traffic. I don't know if we mentioned that. It, it, there did, didn't seem to be as much traffic yeah. on the east side, but I rode my bike on the going to the sun road. And I don't think he had planned on it, but we did the red bus tour and that was in the morning. I think we, it was at 9 a.m. and we were hungry. So we decided to go back in the park to where we had picked up some people for the tour yeah. at a <clears throat> motor lodge. And there was a restaurant there. And A, it's got really good food. Yeah. Um, but yeah. when you first walk in, there's a gift shop. And right away, I said to Gary, oh my gosh, look, they have cycling jerseys for Glacier. A going to the Sun Road cycling jersey. Yeah. So Gary said, as he always does, he can't get it unless he's ridden it. Just like a run, if he's done, he can't have one from a race if he didn't do the race. He may have signed up for the race, but yep. then something happened. So he doesn't want the t-shirt because he didn't do it. You've got to earn it. That's right. And so I saw that jersey. It was a little bit pricey, but you know what? I saw that the road was doable, even though I hadn't ridden in about almost eight or nine weeks. Um, but I rode 15 miles from the visitor center up. I didn't quite make the Logan Pass because I just didn't have the stamina in in my legs and then i rode back down needless to say the ride down was fun <laughs> but with the 30 mile ride on the going to the sun road i definitely earned the jersey if you're a cyclist you definitely have to do it because it's one of those things that you'll never ever forget 
Well, I'm a cyclist, not as much as him, but I don't like being on the roads with the with traffic. So I sat that one out. I did not get the jersey. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the bad, Linda. The bad. We've talked about it several times already, and I just mentioned it. Just the narrow roads and the fact that that they're winding and you just have to exercise so much care and it's really hard to take your eyes off the road as you're making your way up and down the road. Right. Mine would be for our trip, not in Jet Glacier in general. For our trip, I had changed our trip. We were supposed to be on the west side for another extra day, I think, at least an extra day. And I moved us to the east side for an extra day. And I wish I wouldn't have. Um, we had even had a pass too. So we had had a pass for two days in a row and we ended up only using the one, of course, had to let the other one go. But um, yeah, I don't think, I would have wanted more passes for the west side, I think. I think there's more to do on the west side. The ugly. The ugly. And I guess I'll, I'll do this one, I'll kick it off. What I didn't like, and you know, you, you hear the park rangers talking all the time about feeding the animals. And uh, on our trip to Avalanche Lake, um, there was a group, and uh, these little ground squirrels are, are, are very, very friendly because they've almost been domesticated from people feeding them food scraps. And for me, it's a tragedy because you're almost domesticating these animals to where they need to be foraging for their own food to be ready for the winter and to have right. something to eat over the winter. So, so save the ground squirrels, people. It's true though, yeah. it's true. For me, it was the west side narrow roads. That was the ugly for me. I was just on pins and needles the entire time. I, it was, you know, you have a truck. We all have trucks <laughs> to be on that narrow road. And then you would see, you know, a bigger vehicle coming toward you. And we, we definitely had to drive with our windows pulled in. Uh, not the windows, the um, rear, rear, view, rear mirrors. view mirrors. Yeah. Yeah. That it just scared the heck out of me. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't like that. Yeah. It's too bad. They could have made it just a little bit wider. Just on, a little on the, bit. On the west side. Yeah. <laughs> So we're grateful that we got to go all the way to the top to Logan's Pass. We did not expect that at all. It was, you know, the last week of June and it was one of the earliest days that they've opened. Even, even with all the snow, they got a record amount of snow and they were still able to open. Yeah, before, early. Before July. Yeah. So do you have a good bed in the ugly of Glacier? <laughs> we want to hear your stories. Yeah. What? What did you experience? And uh, is it is there something that we might have left out? As we close this, um, we've had a, a number of new subscribers that we want to thank for joining our, our community. And uh, also thank those of you that have been with us for a while. We really have enjoyed the, the dialogue that we've had with you when, when you leave comments. And yeah. you know, feel free to leave comments because we, we do enjoy responding and we, we will respond so uh, but if you've enjoyed this video please give us a like and if you haven't subscribed we appreciate you subscribing yeah joining the blazing new trails community so that's about all that we've got and thanks again for tuning in and we'll look forward to seeing you on the trails bye for now bye